Over the last few years, we've seen a shift from the Church of England towards the progressive agenda, or as kids call it these days, wokeism. But the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, has taken it to a whole new level. Yes, we are talking about reparations. We're talking about more apologies when it comes to the slave trade, only from our side, by the way. No, 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 no. The, the actual African warlords and all the, the people who were selling the slaves, they don't have to apologize. The actual African nations that started the slave trade, they don't have to worry about that. We've already apologized, but that's not enough. We've already spent a lot of money to abolish it. That's not enough. Since then, we've spent so much taxpayer money to send money to the African nations and everywhere else for that matter. That's not enough. The Church of England are using your money to do reparations. Yes, Justin Welby's establishment is set to create a £1 billion fund to tackle the legacy of slavery after an earmarked £100 million that was uh, said to be not really sufficient enough. Yes, Justin Welby has said there that the report was the beginning of a multi-generational response to the appalling evil of transatlantic Charles Lovell in self in January 2023, the Church of England uh, publicly acknowledged its historical benefit from the international slave trade. And they wanted you to think that that's the first time that's been done. Oh, well, it was me, Justin Welby. I created this new apology program. We're going to send more money. But you've already done that. We've done that many times. How many times? How, for how long do we have to be obsessed? about the sins of our fathers and our ancestors. Nothing to do with currently people living in the UK and the people currently living in Africa or anywhere for that matter. Anyway, it launched there the Independent Oversight Group after an £10 billion endowment fund was partly traced to Queen Anne's bounty, a scheme based on their transatlantic year. Of course, uh, that was how it worked back then. The church commissioners uh, then announced a £100 million fund over nine years. But they were all triggered saying, no, 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 that's not, that's not the same money. You know, we, we, need, we need to uh, consider inflation and everything else for that matter. Give more money. Although I can confirm officially that despite multiple apologies and money being given away, and of course the money that we spent to actually abolish the slave trade, we've also spent a lot of British tax money in the name of international aid to the same countries over the last few decades. Anyway, the group said that the funds should aim to attract capital from three sources. The church commissioners, other institutions uh, once complicit in the actual slave trade, and contributors who outraged uh, by injustice wish to make common cause against racial inequality. I mean, this nonsense is going to continue until people in this country rise up and say enough is enough. We're sick and tired of self-guilt politics. We are sick and tired of pol creating politics of envy for uh, the other side. We are sick and tired of being told that we should feel guilty about something that happened centuries ago. Sick and tired of apologies. Sick and tired of identity politics. If you want to really want to help the African nations, you can actually help them do trade instead of giving free money for absolutely no reason. You don't even know where that money is going to go. Trade with the African nations instead of allowing the European Union and other globalists crushing them. Let me know what you think. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.